To many, this is what comes to mind when they think of Wollongong. Heavy industry, coal mining and steel making. But it's far from reality. Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Hannah. We're University of Wollongong journalism students. Over the next half hour or so, we, along with our fellow UAW TV colleagues, will showcase the research, development, creativity and innovation this region has to offer. As you will see, Wollongong is much more than just a steel city. This is Illawarra Innovation. <laughs> The Illawarra is embracing the world of IT. As the sector expands, our region is proving it's already a world leader. Our reporters, Simon, Ben, Christine and Andrew, explain how. With student numbers constantly rising and an increasing need for new infrastructure, the Smart Services CRC Group have developed a program which allows students to access education from their own home. The IC system allows any number of people to interact in an online environment using both video and audio. You can mingle with the crowd, you can move from one conversation to the other conversation and you can also see other people present. They also are free to move and mingle in the environment as naturally they would. Users are represented in the environment by an avatar display board that projects real-time video and audio that has been designed to mimic real-life sound depending on the distance or direction of other users. The makers of the prototype say IC will change the way that people around the world will do business and get an education. The real benefit is about uh, the opportunity to collaborate uh, with lots of people at different times and dynamically form into to groups and really create a, a, what I would see as a canvas for a, a new way for educating you know, people and training people. IC is more of a video collaboration tool that will really uh, change the way people do business the way teams across Australia and across the world can interact with each other. Because the IC system allows students to access classes from their own home, it could mean that lecture theatres like this become a thing of the past. An advantage of the IC system is that its environment can be expanded to accommodate more users when necessary. There is really no uh, limit on it. it the, most of the limit is physiological limit, how many people you can interact with in this at the same time anyway. Professor Sophia says the education trials of IC involve students in remote areas. Simon Anderson, UOW TV. In traditional manufacturing, you would take raw material and carve a product out of it. In 3D printing or additive fabrication, you shape an object from the ground up, particle by particle. It's a revolutionary way to think about fabricating structures. No longer are they just for rapid prototyping. Um, they get into more functional testing, even in some cases in used parts, assembly, jigs and fixtures. We're generating devices for nerve or muscle repair uh, using additive fabrication. And that's really pushing the boundaries because now we're talking about additive fabrication that involves the incorporation of living cells, for example. Professor Gordon Wallace hopes Illawarra businesses will be quick to snap up the technology. I think additive fabrication will be, uh, have a dramatic impact uh, both on existing industries and how we think about prototyping, for example, with metals or polymers, but also in, in realising opportunities for new industries. This building houses the country's state-of-the-art facility for 3D printing. It's not just for UOW, it's a national centre with some of the best researchers from all over the world. I know the university is trying to draw in uh, projects from local businesses. I think it's a fantastic facility. It's got a great range of expertise in the staff. Earlier this year, Innovation Campus hosted a conference for business people looking to the future of 3D printing. We want to get people in here as much as possible to have a look at what it can do because it's one of those technologies we're, we're, we're seeing really is believing. Uh, I think it's beyond a disruptive technology uh, becoming an eruptive technology. It really is very exciting what it could do. Ben Neutzer, UOW TV. Safe Zone is the flagship product of Critical Arc. Glenn Farrant says he's taken 10 years to develop the idea for a safer environment, starting with the University of Wollongong. We allow individuals to call for help wherever they are and have the response from the security team 
to be as efficient and effective as possible. It sends their location as well as other information about that person. Working in the Navy and with surveillance systems, Glenn learnt that situational awareness helps to ensure responses happen in a timely manner. Trials so far have been very successful. It can pinpoint where an um, incident's happened, the first aid, GRS or situations like that where we can respond straight away because there's times where you don't know where people are, they can't give you the proper directions. We were concerned that they may uh, not take to it or may think that they've got other solutions in place for that, but we had great feedback uh, from them. <laughs> The company, working out of StartPad, will fill in gaps in current security systems. The broad coverage has given trial users extra assurance. I was one of the first um, non-security team members to put the app on my phone and trial it. So as a member of staff, you know, that has to walk to my car late at night, being able to access that from my smartphone instead of having to get to a blue security phone is just a really great feature. On the 23rd of July, UOW will launch the full-scale app for staff and students. The hope is that other university campuses will follow suit by the next academic year. I think the, the main advantage of this type of product is, is it doesn't require any fixed infrastructure to be put in place to give you greater coverage for your security team. Christine Tarbert, UOW TV. Imagine the world is a game and you're part of it. Wollongong-based social app developer Lime Rocket has just come out of stealth mode with its new mobile gaming platform. The technology allows the iPhone or Android smartphone to become your very own game controller. The idea is that we are going to hopefully redefine social gaming and allow massive amounts of people to play one single game. Lime Rocket founder Mike Gardner has always had a passion for gaming. He says today's technology provides unlimited options for game development. Thanks to the iPhone and smartphones in general, pretty much anyone who has uh, the ability to create games now has also the ability to deliver those games. The current project is the only one of its kind in Australia and has been nine months in the making. This is a new thing for gaming and uh, it's something that we're pretty excited about. Lime Rocket operates out of the Startpad complex in the Wollongong CBD. It's here, inside what's been dubbed the Illawarra's Ideas Incubator, that innovative social media, engineering and app development is currently underway. Lime Rocket plan to turn the world into a game. They want you to be a part of it, and all it takes is one of these. We, we don't want to take over your lives with our games and our developers' games. We just want to fill those small slices of your life that might be boring. It might be the two minutes that you're waiting for your friend to come to the cafe. You know, we want to give you a fun thing to do when you're there. Jared Bryce is Lime Rocket's artist. Most of what I do is 3D modelling and rendering and texturing. Um, and that all gonna goes into the game. Um, it's everything that you see that looks really cool. Lime Rocket's next goal is to hit the cinema screen. They want to get as many people as they can to be part of the action. The key to your involvement is in your pocket. Andrew Pearson, UAW TV. When you think of innovation in health, the mind wanders to images of laboratories and hospitals. But, as Tanya and Sophie find out, breakthroughs in health happen in and outside the lab, from high-tech microscopes to the theatre stage. 77-year-old Wollongong resident Rodney Sloan was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in November 2011. Going from, from working on a house from ground up to finish to coming to this where I haven't got a lot of mobility uh, is a bit hard to take. The medical research facility at the University of Wollongong is awaiting the arrival of a $700,000 microscope. It will replace the current 13-year-old one, greatly improving research capabilities. This will allow us to, to literally study at the individual molecular level the interactions between those proteins that are involved in those diseases. This new capability, known as single molecule fluorescence, has been available commercially for three years, but only a handful of people worldwide can analyse the data. I'm pretty looking forward to getting that machine here so that we can, you know, ask our own questions um, which come from a different direction and we'll, we'll be the only people in the world doing it, so that'll be pretty exciting. Professor Wilson and his team will be working to establish how these diseases develop. 
If you can understand the processes that cause a disease, then you can design a cure. Karen Fleming has worked in aged care for 15 years, specialising in dementia care. If they were able to retain just a minimal amount of memory for basic needs, it'd make their quality of life 100% better. Although a cure is still years away, the possibility is enough to give hope to those affected. If there was a cure to be found by this research, it would just be magic. If I heard that there was a cure, I'd say, well, you be it as long as I live long enough. Tanya Dendrinos, UOW TV. First cinema borrowed from surgeons. <laughs> now surgeons are taking back. Senior Illawarra urologist Dr Paul Kovac will be the first surgeon in Australia to use 3D technology for laparoscopy when it hits our shores later this year. It's for general laparoscopy uh, and, and, and more specialised types of surgery, we've still been uh, forced to use a 2D scope. Laparoscopy, commonly known as keyhole surgery, is a minimally invasive procedure used for diagnosis and treatment. Should 3D television screens in the operating theatre be a success, surgeons will have cinema to thank for the advancements in technology which have eroded negative side effects like nausea. Studies in the UK have shown that the equipment can decrease the learning curve for surgeons. Everything eventually, whether you use 2D or 3D, you'll improve with time, uh, but hopefully 3D would reduce that time and you'll be able to do better, more complex tasks uh, faster. The screens will help reduce fatigue in surgeons who spend a lot of energy interpreting the third dimension, depth. So it's sort of like a combing your hair in a, in a mirror. So you, you don't realise that the picture in the mirror is actually two-dimensional, but you're actually three-dimensional combing your hair. Same thing with operation, you don't have that depth perception when you do laparoscopic surgery. While the equipment has more apparent benefits for surgeons, Dr Kovac says patients shouldn't fear for an increase in surgical costs. Because patients have already you know, fairly fixed sort of exposure to how much a procedure costs. Kieran Deck, UOW TV. When it comes to dealing with mental health, young people are often in the dark and are unsure of where to turn to for help. MindBlank aims to bring to light mental health issues through interactive theatre pieces, which positively engage with young people. University of Wollongong graduate Ali Kelly established MindBlank after recognising a need to educate young people on mental health issues through new and exciting ways. The first step is humour because it gets them laughing, it gets them taking down their barriers and engaging with the information that we're dealing with. I want to see you go from an F to an A. What is that? An F to an A in one week. With one in four young people diagnosed with a mental illness at any one time, Raising awareness from a young age is important. So we're tackling it young, mm. so that if any young people may be suffering from any of the warning signs or symptoms, they know exactly what to do and how to prepare themselves without being too scared to take some of that action. Kerry Searle is currently researching the effectiveness of mind blank shows as part of her master's degree. The young people get an opportunity to actually give their own input too, so they own the, the solutions. So it's not some professional or an adult telling them what to do. And so it really does lower those barriers that we know are there for young people. Mind Blank use forum theatre to discuss mental health topics such as depression and suicide prevention, which relies on audience participation and involvement. It's a very warm, inviting environment so that you can just express your ideas. There are no bad ideas, you know, just ideas. It's not just about one choice, it's about different choices that we make in our life can impact our future. Mind Blank are currently busy rehearsing for the Healthy Minds Theatre Conference. Soon he's getting stoned and drunk daily. It feels fantastic. Sophie Harris, UAW TV. As we move into the future, sustainable living will continue to become more important. Courtney and Miley have found two projects in the Illawarra that are putting our resources to good use. Could you turn your old mattress into household items? Self Landing is leading the way in this new form of recycling. Foam, for example, we sell that to Dunlop and that's used as carpet underlay. The timber is chipped and used as mulch in your gardens. The textile we reuse in our punching bag manufacturing business. The company enlisted the help of engineers to build two one-of-a-kind machines to deconstruct the mattresses and manufacture the punching bags. While they make quite a noise, they cut down the processing time from hours to minutes. 
a business that started with two guys in a truck, has now expanded to over 60 employees. Softer Landing is not only working towards a greener future, but is assisting those who often face barriers gaining employment. We've got a very colourful background. A lot of 20 years of my adult life was incarcerated, um, so I've been around the traps. So we've got people from all walks of life, that's what makes it really interesting and it's a buzz to work here. Um, being a mentor, someone that's been able to, well, for me it's to be able to give back. Courtney Howe, UOW TV. This space is urban grown. A city farm located behind Warrawong High School created to break ongoing unemployment in the southern suburbs of Wollongong. A lot of workers that are focused in the southern suburbs of Wollongong um, had been working out here a long time and realised that we needed to do something around the intergenerational employment in this community. Urban Grown is a social enterprise business operating in a commercial nature meaning that the profits made from the farm go back into its purpose. In this case of Urban Grown, we're able to use the profits that we make to create more employment outcomes for people. Urban Grown is in its establishment stages and is currently being prepared for livestock and food crops. Next week or two we'll be putting in garlic and mainly all your annual vegetable crops. So we'll be doing all the seasonal vegetable crops. Urban Grown will be working with its neighbours Warrawong High School promoting agricultural skills and after school jobs for the students. We will be targeting between two and four students a year to go through the certification process because it is very significant and what we are talking about there is a traineeship leading to hopefully employment when they leave school. The students of Warrawong High School are already undergoing a permaculture program. The skills learnt through this program are planned to help students once working with Urban Grown. We don't have to sit in the classroom in front of a desk, we just come out here, learn about permaculture, learn life skills. While Urban Grown continues to develop, the skills and opportunities that come along with this project are of timeless value to the community. Miley Hogan, UOW TV. Education is all about learning new things. An innovative literacy program is transforming our kindergarten classrooms while rugby league players are exchanging tackles for textbooks. Our reporters Hannah and Jess have more. A kindergarten classroom would not be the first place you'd think to find innovation, but step into a classroom that incorporates the L3 program and I'm sure you'll be surprised. Don't forget to make the word on your board, Sienna. Make the word on the board and then draw it. The Language Learning and Literacy Program has changed the way of teaching literacy in the classroom and has been introduced here at Bulleye Public School in recent months. What happens in L3 classrooms is that we put children in groups around three children so that they're working with the teacher in that small group so that they're working on skills and strategies at an appropriate level for each child. L3 appeals to individual learning needs as not every child learns in the same way. The L3 program is a more explicit way of teaching um, literacy to kindergarten students. Um, it sort of helps um, students um, with early literacy skills. The L3 program sets out to reduce the risk of children not achieving expected literacy results after their first year of school. The aim is to lessen that gap between the communities so that all children, regardless of their background or their past experiences, finish kindergarten reading and writing at a similar level. And as for the students... Their little faces light up when they walk in the room and they see all the activities. They seem to be really enjoying it and definitely seen some significant improvement in some of the early literacy results. Teachers here at Bulleye Public School say L3 has been instrumental in creating a change in learning and believe this is the pathway to the future of teaching in the early years. That's it, that's the word, good job. Hannah Robertson, UAWTV. NRL is a very time-consuming thing with training, team meetings, uh, public commitments and things like that. Sam Jabelli, Ben Cray and Scott Stewart are the co-founders and driving forces behind the Graduates of League program. The program aims to assist players with university entrance and course completion rates. And basically the goal behind it is to help students balance those commitments, helping them to achieve results along with their on-field results. Jack Stockwell plays first grade football for the St George Dragons and is currently studying commerce at the University of Wollongong. Well Sandra Billy and Benny Craig came up to me one day and just, just asked me if I wanted to be part of the program which I was starting up. Um, I thought it was a good idea, getting all the young kids to get involved in uni and 
a life after football. Stockwell is part of the Graduates of League program, which allows him flexibility in his timetable and provides mentor assistance. My responsibilities are basically to meet with Jack uh, for a couple of hours a week and we just go through what he's learnt that week, cover some areas that he might be having some problems with and just all round revision. The Graduates of League program is a new initiative in its first year running and currently supports 16 Dragons players. Jack's a, a really, really good student, really smart kid, so it's more about helping him along to find the time and focus on certain things that he needs to when he's not training with the team. Jess Feeney, UOW TV. Innovation is often highlighted in health and IT. However, it is also having an impact on disability services and the creative industries. Tom and Ewan report. Founded in 2006, Slice of Life started business at Reflections Cafe at Warragi Lawn Cemetery. Today, Solar employs 14 people with disabilities with a general store in North Nowra acting as a training kitchen and retail outlet. We're a not-for-profit charity organisation and um, everything we do and just goes back into to staffing. We also offer opportunities um, for work experience and school-based traineeships. One of those trainees is Brett Ford from Nowra High School. Brett attends on-the-job training one day a week at Slice of Life. So he has to attend the, the school-based hospitality course. So he has to do all the outcomes at school, but some of those outcomes are met in the workplace. Fantastic support, um, fantastic team to work with. We work so well together and get along so well. This is a boy who, when I first started Nara High, didn't even like to leave the room on his own. You might be thinking, where's the innovation in this? But the reality is, Opportunities for people with disabilities are limited, particularly in the Shoalhaven. And the work Solar does doesn't finish at their general store. The reason I actually um, started Slice of Life is that I worked for a local employment agency and it was my job to find people with disabilities employment. That is where I actually saw that there was just this huge gap. Solar are currently raising funds for their sustainable living project which will be housed in the small suburb of Terrera. All the scraps from the shop will go out there, feed the chickens and, um, and then obviously the composting and the eggs will be used in our facilities as well. Located five minutes from the centre of Nowra, the project will give people working at Solar the opportunity to learn about animal husbandry and horticultural studies. It involves a one acre parcel of land um, that is purely will be used to grow vegetables and herbs. Also hopefully we'll have a, a chicken enclosure where we can have wheelchair access. Ewan McCarroll, UOW TV. As emerging technologies are becoming commercially available, new art mediums and techniques are causing a divide. It helped a lot to be able to try and capture like the amount of time I've invested into this with the camera and without that I don't think I could uh, portray such a serious scale of that. It, it allows more possibilities like you can it's a creative medium and I think technology can enhance that instead of inhibit that so. The art world is rapidly joining the digital age but some people aren't excited about this change. I am against the photoshopping, the, against the changing. What we do is we're intrinsically losing a little bit of ourselves with that basically what we produce has to be individual and it has to be something that we believe in ourselves not something that is is mass produced galleries and their collections is one of the most contentious issues on debate uh, not only can a gallery be sort of limiting like you have to go to the gallery instead of say if the arts on the internet the internet can come to you and you can see it that way and i think through digital medium and through the internet uh it will get a lot more exposure uh and will reach more people I think if we have to, if, if an artist has worked hard to produce a piece of art, then an audience ought to work hard to see it. One possible outcome of this trend is that soon all of this may be available right here in our pockets. Tom Farquhar, UOW TV. Innovation is everywhere in the Illawarra. It could help you find somewhere to hang out or your next cup of coffee. Belinda and Matt tell us how. Tristan Grace and Nathan Waters are the minds behind the company 42 Startups. They're designing a new program that stems from the Facebook phenomenon. 
Our latest innovative idea is called Local Challenge. And so the basic idea about that is that we wanted to try and create a viral Facebook app that would be kind of fun for people to share around and show where they've actually been to in the local area. Nathan and Tristan can then collect the data generated by this application to find out what local people do and where they socialise. We're trying to hopefully um, merge this with another idea of ours called Yellow Fridge. And we realised we need a few users and a little bit of data to actually get that started. So we thought we'd try and develop a Facebook app to actually start getting users and people actually interested in it. Yellow Fridge is a website that hopes to incorporate information from social networking sites and tourism authorities to help give you a detailed list of local businesses. Yellow Fridge is kind of very similar to Yelp and a lot of other services like that but our service is a little bit different in that it ranks um, the results based on Facebook likes. The data shown on the site will be collected through an online database developed by 42 startups which searches the internet for new information relevant to Yellow Fridge users. Using that checking data from Foursquare and checking data from Facebook and uh, Yelp reviews and Yellow Pages data, we're hoping to combine all that data together to actually provide some decent results. What's a good place to eat? Where's a good place to go? Belinda Cleary, UOW TV. The Morning Coffee. It's a global ritual. So when someone comes along with a unique, advanced way to roast the coffee bean, it's more than interesting, it's world changing. It's called hybrid coffee roasting and it combines conventional coffee roasting techniques with microwave technology. Dave McLean is the man behind the development. He needed a change after years of using his microwave expertise for other people's companies. Uh, I got to a point where I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be great to do something for myself? but he couldn't do it alone. We're in a very privileged position that we've had a unique team of people with all the right skill set packaged up to be able to get us to this point. The team spent more than seven years developing a number of prototypes before finally achieving success. This is what all the fuss is about. This little bag of beans is the result of the team's years of hard work. They say it tastes and smells better than any other kind of coffee, but the benefits don't end there. There's none of that waiting time that you get in a traditional roast. The improved control means this type of roasting boasts a number of benefits over traditional methods. We actually get about 37% increase in antioxidants in our roasting compared to traditional roasting. In, in a traditional roaster, because the bean's sitting in there for a long time at an elevated temperature, all the components that make up flavour and aroma start to vaporise. Best of all, the entire operation is electrically powered and is around 70% more energy efficient than conventional gas roasters. So you can be sitting down enjoying this amazing coffee and knowing at the same time that you're doing a good thing for the environment. Matt Baxter, UOW TV. And that's our program, a glimpse into the masses of research, development and innovation happening in our region. We're more than just a steel city. Wollongong is the city of innovation.